I spent Wednesday speaking to our junior high and youth groups about value, and um, and if just the reality, and I think that our youth are seeing it more and more that if they don't know that they have value, they're really not going to live like they have value. And when you don't value something, you don't take care of it. And when you don't uh, value something, you don't respect it. And so um, what we're seeing today a lot is uh, a, a bunch of kids who don't know how valuable they are, and they are questioning who they are, and they're told to like question if you believe this or you believe that. You're, you, sh you know, they're t constantly being challenged on what they believe, and so therefore we have a lot of kids right now that just don't even know that they're worthy. And don't even know that they that you know there's something greater coming down the road, and they're living like it, and they're living dangerously, and they're di living uh, out of a fear of of insecurities and all sorts of things that we could go on. But even for us, we don't always realize how valuable we are. And the thing is, I was I was taught growing up. I mean, I was I I got too big of a head. I was so valuable. I thought I was great. I thought I was destined for huge things because I was told that. But, you know, a lot of people aren't told that these days. And the reality of it is this, too, is it's not about big things that you're destined for. It's you. I was telling the Sealy kids, you get up, you go to work, you take care of your family, you love on the community that you're in. That is valuable. And we need to uh, emphasize that more and more, that it's not about what college you get into and what sports you're into or academically. Like, I've been listening to so many podcasts lately about people who are extremely successful that did horrible in school. You know, and I got a little guy that struggles, and I'm just holding on to hope because I'm like, he's going to be a phenomenal person because it has nothing to do with those things. Regardless, I said, you could sit on the couch and be a bum for the rest of your life, and God would still value you. And that is the message that we really need to get them. But, you know, and I said, but out of that is the freedom then to go live and to go risk things and risk your heart being broken and go love on people. And so I really do, when he's talking about what this body is doing, it may, it's not on a grand scale. It's not in, the, you know, we're not making the news, which is great. Thank God. But what we do is extremely valuable. And who you are is extremely valuable to the kingdom of God. You know, you remove one, you know, I was just talking to my youth group, and he was just saying, I feel like I'm valuable, but if I was removed from this situation, I don't think anybody would notice. I go, but, um, but we, we would. And it would have a trickling down effect on our community and on your family and on your environment. You know, we're just dealing now with the trickle down effect of, of missing out on our, my father-in-law. Because he was valuable. And we're seeing it, you know? And so these kids got to know that. And the second thing I want to say is this. Um, our approach to missions has changed a ton. And so when we're sitting here encouraging you to give and thankful that you're giving, I, I have a lot of emotions about that because, you know, there's so many places you could be placing your money and there's so many organizations and stuff like that. But um, the reality is this. We've changed our approach a lot to it. We... Um, are going to get back into groups, but our approach is different. And what for many years it was is you took a bunch of teenagers over there and you put them to work, which is great. That's an experience. They need that. They need to understand. They need to be in new environments. But where it's more powerful and where we've been directing it more lately is through our finances of getting it to these countries, them being able to hire people and provide jobs for these people and give them a little bit of power in this situation where they oftentimes feel totally powerless. And that has great value of getting stirring up the local people. So then what do we do? What Pastor John does so wonderfully is go over and encourages them and becomes a friend. And guess what? That's valuable. And we put the, um, and I don't know if there's a better word, but really we do put the power back in their hands, that they get to do what they need to do, that they get to get people involved in their communities. It's not just us coming in and acting like we're the heroes, because we're not. It's not us coming in and acting like we know everything, we got it all great, because it's not. But um, there's a time and a place, you know, we are looking. I, I desperately want to get my kids overseas, because there's something about getting out of this country that opens your eyes and you go, okay, yeah. So the world is a really big place. And God really has created some unique people. And we are all are valuable. So those are two rabbit trails. Sorry, we'll go down. But when he was speaking, I just wanted to emphasize just what we do is extremely important to the kingdom of God. 
And what, and even if it is, like he said, when you get to heaven and you go, all I did was give $10 a month to such and such. And Jesus goes, oh my gosh, do you know what I got to do with your $10? Here's, here's the people I want you to meet. And that to me is the reward. We get really stuck on sometimes what it's going to look like. And if it's the, if it's going to be gold or rubies or whatever, and I really don't care about that. The reward is going to be where you get to see where you've sown your seeds and what God got to do with it and how exciting that is and the lives that got changed.